The business case for virtualizing email is compelling in that it offers lower costs, less management, and greater flexibility and agility for the enterprise. We recommend that enterprises should deploy email in a virtualized production environment by default, meaning that's the standard deployment and anything else is an exception. The benefits are numerous. For example, you can have a better disaster recovery and high availability solution using the hypervisor's capabilities for moving the application across the hardware environment or adding resources as you need it. You also have a better testing environment and it allows you to get to deployment faster when you need to deploy new patches or new uh, environments within your infrastructure for email. In addition, you can save costs on the hardware and optimize the hardware environment and get better TCO out of your hardware through the capabilities that the hypervisors uh, provide in allowing you to use all of that hardware and all of the resources it offers uh, for your application environment. There are several perceived barriers to virtualizing uh, a mission-critical application like email, and particularly uh, with Microsoft Exchange. One of the key uh, barriers that some customers believe is, is that there is a lack of support for virtualizing uh, a mission-critical application such as email. And in the case of Exchange and Lotus Notes, both vendors fully support uh, those applications virtualized, and there's a lot of help from the hypervisor vendors. Uh, for example, if you want to virtualize Exchange 2010, not only do you have a lot of best practices and support from Microsoft, but uh, companies like VMware offer uh, a ton of resources resources that you can utilize to ensure that you can virtualize successfully. In addition, another barrier that is commonly perceived by customers is that there's a performance issue. Uh, in the past, it was perceived that the hypervisor added uh, too much uh, performance hit to virtualize a, an application like Exchange. And in the past, that may have been true where hypervisors may have had a, between a 10 and 14 percent performance hit. But with the new hypervisors running on the newer hardware with the newer chipsets, the performance is negligible. It's, uh, the, the hit is only 3 to 5 percent. In addition to that, Microsoft has done an excellent job of enhancing the performance of Exchange itself with over a 90% improvement in the input-output capabilities between Exchange 2003 and Exchange 2010. Now finally, another barrier is the idea that uh, from a licensing and infrastructure, it would cost more to virtualize. Because in the past, many organizations would build out their infrastructure and overbuy in order to ensure that their email environment could grow as rapidly as the company grew. But with virtualization, you can now add those resources on the fly in a dynamic environment and you don't have to overbuy anymore, so you actually save quite a bit on licensing and in the hardware and infrastructure costs that you otherwise would have bought in the past. The enterprises that I've spoken with have taken several steps to be successful in virtualizing a mission critical application such as email. Specifically, one of the things that they have done is they've made sure that they size the environment correctly and they take advantage of the tool sets offered from the email vendors themselves as well as the hypervisor vendors to architect and design an environment that will support that mission critical application. Another thing that they need to do is you need to pick the right hardware. Older hardware doesn't work well in this type of environment. You need to pick newer hardware with the newer chipsets that give you the hooks into the hypervisor environment in order to optimize and take advantage of what those hypervisors give you for managing and virtualizing uh, this mission critical application. You also need to tune into the best practices that are available in the market from all of the vendors and in the shared communities. There are many enterprises that are virtualizing email successfully and they are willing to share their information and their best practices with you and with their vendors in order to be successful. And then finally, pilot and test. Educate yourself on how to successfully virtualize email and then take that experience into your environment and optimize it. Virtualizing email just makes sense. 
uh, it's a mission critical application that now with the benefits that you can get with less costs, lower management uh, requirements, and greater flexibility, that the benefits uh, drive a business case that is beneficial to the enterprise.